Good morning, Bhargav. It's Friday, the 17th of February. Here's the heads up brief for today. For the Southeast Asia production, we covered 21 issues. In North Asia, we covered eight. And for the Australasia and Pacific Islands, we covered six. South Asia, we covered 12 issues, plus the major issues in the Europe, Middle East, and um, Africa regions. Hello there. Which are the major issues today? Right. So in Indonesia, uh, trade unions have threatened protests against um, the government decree, which replaces the omnibus law on job creation. Uh, they've threatened protests across the country and a national strike um, at the end of the month. The law is supposed to be approved in mid-March. All right. Uh, also in Indonesia, authorities reopened the Pado Airport in uh, Induga, Papua, which is where the New Zealand citizen was kidnapped uh, from. And um, authorities are trying to negotiate with the West Papua National Liberation Army, uh, but there's not much that has come out of it so far. All right. Uh, in South Korea, an Uzbek and a Kazakh national uh, were arrested by the police for funding a terrorist group uh, linked to Al-Qaeda in Syria through cryptocurrency. Okay. Um, in Thailand, the police are investigating around 150 people and nearly 60 organizations. Uh, this is in connection to a multi-billion pot gambling network case uh, that has been linked to a senior police officer in the country. Okay. In um, East Timor, uh, authorities announced the electoral schedule. May The parliamentary elections will be held on the 21st of May. Okay. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan Tariki and Saf supporters are gathering in Lahore today. This is ahead of Imran Khan's expected arrest later this week, as he has indicated he will not uh, answer a summons for the Tushkana case at the Tushkana case at the Lahore court. Uh, so PTI has called on his protesters to gather at Zaman Park in Lahore and block uh, Imran Khan from being arrested if he is. I guess he is taking a bit of a gamble by taking on the judiciary, not just the military establishment. I wonder if he thinks he has a really strong pull at the ground level that he can disrupt the capital cities of major provinces, including Islamabad. Uh, Uday, do you think he has that uh, prowess even now after stepping down? Uh no, I mean, last year he tried to organize at least two long marches to Islamabad. Both were unsuccessful. And right now, you know, with the increased security threat and terror threat, I don't see like hundreds of thousands of people marching for Imran Khan. Yes, that, I guess that's the gamble. I mean, if uh, if it takes on these establishments, uh, both security and uh, judiciary, without the support of the people and mass at the ground level, uh, he's getting himself into trouble. So we'll have to watch out how this unfolds. Yep, definitely. We'll keep an eye out on it. Uh, also in Pakistan, farmers protested at the Karachi Press Club and the Lahore Press Club yesterday. Uh, this is against the increased price on petroleum products, which the government has put in place to be able to acquire loans from the International Monetary Fund. Uh, they were going to reach an agreement earlier this week or late last week, but that fell through. All right. Uh, in India, Tripura held the state elections yesterday. There were low levels of uh, sporadic violence. Um, on the 2nd of March will be the vote counting. Okay. Okay. Now, Tripura as a state may be in the periphery as far as national politics as, is concerned, but it does set the tone for the future or even the contemporary status of CPIM, Communist Party of India. Tripura was the last bastion which held, which they held in the east, uh, apart from Kerala down south. So, uh, so hopefully, hopefully we'll see something more positive for uh, the CPIM. Otherwise, there won't be any uh, credible opposition party in the northeast. Right, right, and yeah, coming up ahead of the elections next year, there's no credible party on a national level either. Exactly. Um, okay, so in Bangladesh, uh, one Rohingya refugee was killed and two others were injured in a camp in Cox's Bazar. This is after gunmen opened fire on them. Authorities are pursuing the suspects. All right.
Um, lastly, in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa region, in Iraq, uh, Total Energies extended the deadline to finalize a $27 billion, billion uh, energy contract with Iraq. Uh, the deal okay. nearly fell apart, um, but they have extended the deadline to the next month. So let's see how that goes. But what's compounding this is that um, the Iraqi government, which came to power in October, uh, last year after, you know, a long political deadlock. It's now facing a crisis because the Kurdish Democratic Party may be pulling support uh, off the prime minister. And this is over tensions between Erbil and Baghdad. Uh, this includes um, oil revenue sharing between the national government and Kurdistan. All right. Now, the Kurds may have calmed down for now, but this issue of revenue sharing or even natural resources uh, between the national government in Baghdad and the provincial government in Kurdistan, this may reignite tensions uh, at a micro level, and it may actually blow over to cross-border terrorism because Kurds are notorious for cross-border trafficking and whatnot. So we'll have to watch out how this affects businesses across the board. Right keep an eye out on that Bhargav that's a brief for today anything else from you uh, nothing else that. that was a good brief thank you thanks